Many of us love pets. Many of us consider our pets to be our best friends, or even our family. But when it comes to pets, most of us tend to think of the likes of cats, dogs, rabbits, or snakes. But there are some people who form intense relationships not with the animals you would expect, but with animals of a far wilder nature. Oh my. These are the most unusual friendships between humans and wild animals. Number 15. Incredible relationships with lions. A chance meeting with two boisterous young male lions changed the way Kevin Richardson viewed the world. Just the sheer power of an animal like Fayetzi, but... The opportunity presented itself, and he grabbed it with both hands. When he looks back now, he never quite understood how significant that decision would be. It completely changed the world as he knew it. Uh, that we see around the world and that we over here can also create awareness about. The lions, Tao and Napoleon, were initially very shy, but under the watchful eye and care of Richardson, they have developed individual personalities. Both are steadfastly loyal and have become his soulmates. The connection between the trio is obvious and heartwarming, considering Richardson's first reaction was a purely selfish one. He asked himself what he could gain from the relationship. He soon realized that the lions were getting something out of it too. Richardson opened the Kevin Richardson Wildlife Sanctuary. It's essentially an 1,800-acre refuge for wild animals and is situated just outside of Johannesburg. Here, he has raised an entire pride of lions and each accepts him as part of their family. Aside from one incident where Richardson had to get in the middle of a territorial lioness intent on killing a newborn cub from her sister's litter, He's been pretty lucky, but never loses sight of the fact that the lions can turn on him at any moment. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or Slenderman will come from under your bed while you're sleeping. Now it's time for the odd topic. While Captain Hook from Peter Pan may have been terrified of crocodiles, that's not the case for everyone. Especially not this guy. Introducing Mr. Farapo Sare, aka the Crocodile Whisperer. He is well known as the only person in the world capable of casually riding a crocodile as if it's a horse. He's even been known to kiss the crocs. Mr. Sare was actually the victim of a crocodile attack some years ago, but he still dedicated 35 years of his life to becoming their friend. Incredible, right? Would you put that amount of time into becoming friends with something that might want to eat you? Let us know. As always, comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 14. Friendship with Hippo A tornado that ripped through Headsproot, South Africa in March 2000 changed the lives of ex-gamekeeper Tony Jobert and his wife Shirley forever. Unlike many others who had lost their homes or their lives, the Joberts welcomed a new family member, and an unusual one at that. A flood had swept a deadly ill newborn hippo away from the safety of its mother and out into the big wide world. Alone, extremely underweight, and still with her umbilical cord attached, Jessica was struggling to breathe when she was found on the Joberts family farm. That's what she is. That is what she is. Yes. The little orphan hippo was taken in and nursed back to health, forming a close bond with Tony and Shirley. 17 years later, Jessica is still an important member of the family. However, she comes and goes as she pleases. Some days she can be seen eating from her mother Shirley's hand in the kitchen. Other days, the children feed her from a wooden platform above the waterway. Tourists flock to see Jessica, amazed at her interaction with humans, as hippos are known 
known for being unpredictable and considered the most dangerous mammals in Africa. Watching Jessica napping on the veranda, watching television, or enjoying a soothing massage, it's hard to believe she's a wild animal. Number 13. Young Woman Lives with Wild Dingoes Above all else, dingoes have a reputation for being dangerous. Essentially a wild dog that roams the Australian outback, the dingo is known to attack and even kill humans. So right now we're in the dingo puppy den and as you can see we have a beautiful there have even been some reports of dingoes eating babies. So why then would someone choose to have two as their family pets? Lisa, a 24-year-old Australian pharmacy worker, says it was love at first sight when she adopted her unusual fur babies, but she has found it hard to safely raise them. The extremely proficient predators take a lot of work, but she still believes giving them a home was the best decision she ever made. She's training to become a zookeeper and says before she became a mom to the pair, she knew very little about them. Although it's illegal to keep dingoes as pets in most parts of Australia, you can obtain a special permit to have them in the Northern Territory, Western Australia, the Australian Capital Territory, and Victoria, where Lisa lives. Although they're dangerous as a species, and she wouldn't approach one in the wild, Choppa and Thor are her entire life. Lisa and her partner Matthew Harvey did their research, but they still weren't prepared for all the challenges thrown at them. They say they're not domestic dogs, extremely hard work, and are more challenging than your normal garden variety canine. A dingo may not be everyone's household pet of choice, but Lisa and Matthew say they're loyal and love them unconditionally. Number 12. Surprising Friendship Between Man and Croc you might question everything you've ever heard about crocodiles after watching this video of a man and his scaly friend getting along like a house on fire. Costa Rican fisherman Cheeto found the severely injured croc on the side of the Parasmino River over 20 years ago. And you, you do it with heart, you feel it. If you don't do something good, you don't want to have nothing. The animal, clearly in pain, had been shot by a local farmer and was in desperate need of assistance. In fact, if it wasn't for the kindness of Cheeto, he would have died a slow, agonizing death. The five-meter crocodile, who Cheeto named Pocho, was nursed back to health by the animal lover who just couldn't bear to leave him to die. Thankfully, he was well rewarded for his efforts, and the pair developed an unlikely friendship. Having regained his strength, Pocho was released back into the wild. However, he had other plans. Cheeto sought permission from the Minister for Environment, and with the help of a vet, he has now looked after the reptile for over two decades. The pair trust each other so much that they spend hours swimming and playing together, with Pocho both gentle and patient with his human companion. He is now a tourist attraction, with visitors, scientists, and animal behaviorists all keen to see him in action. Number 11. Sean Ellis, Man Among Wolves. This guy is so obsessed with wolves that he's virtually become one. Aside from his human exterior, Sean Ellis is simply part of the pack. <laughs> National Geographic followed the controversial individual who has been described as eccentric by many. Others admire him and think his life is inspirational, a true example of the instinctive friendship between humans and animals. The commitment to his beloved wolves has cost him a lot. He has lost his family, his home, and his finances are in tatters. But Sean wouldn't have it any other way. He is the only known human adult to willingly live with wolves as part of their community and is considered the alpha male of the pack. Although many scientists have questioned his motives and experience, Sean says he loves the animals and simply wanted to get to know them better. To help safeguard them, and their cousins in the wild. At a young age, he showed a fascination in wolves following a visit to the zoo. This fascination grew even after he had enlisted in the British Armed Forces. He would often go into the woods at night to record wolves, but just looking at them was just not enough. 
Sean's wife left him, becoming sick of his obsession. She took their five children with her, and he was left alone. Against all odds, Sean started living with the wolves. They accepted him as one of their own after eight long months. While living with them over an 18-month period, he ate raw meat and learned to howl like the rest of his pack. Number 10. Woman Leader of the Pride it's not only wolves that treat humans as their leader, this pride of lions knows who's in charge, too. They live in a privately owned wild animal park in South Africa and spend their days with Orlazmi, who has raised them since they were cubs. The four lion cubs see her as their leader and took to her for guidance. They allow her to laze around on the grass with them, giving her lion-sized hugs and plenty of slobbery kisses. At just 17 months old, the lions are still just babies. But one day, Lazmi hopes to say goodbye to them as they are released back into the wild. At the moment, they are considered so tame and members of the public are allowed into their enclosure with support from Lazmi. She is a constant in their lives and has been with them since they were babies. Lazmi disciplines them as she understands each one's mood swings and individual personality. In South Africa, there are more lions in captivity than in the wild, and Lazmi hopes that the park will be able to achieve their goal of safely integrating the lions back into their natural habitat in order to help increase their numbers. Number 9. The Real Life Mowgli For Namibia-born Tippi Degri, the dangers of childhood were far greater than most youngsters will have endured. Her days were spent enjoying the sights and sounds of Africa, interacting with wild animals. Tippi's best friend was a leopard called J and B. <laughs> and a five-ton elephant was her brother. It might sound bizarre to most, but to Tippy, her childhood was idyllic. Her French parents, Sylvie Robert and Elaine Degree, knew that they didn't want a normal childhood for their daughter and went to great lengths to ensure it was different than most. Her extremely unique upbringing included days chilling with cheetahs, hugging bullfrogs, and riding the neighbor's ostrich. She made friends with the children of local tribes and was taught how to prepare food from the wild and use a bow and arrow. In fact, to some degree, her life mirrored that of Mowgli, the fictional child raised by a wolf pack in the jungles of India. Tippy was fearless. She had a special gift and could happily communicate with the animals all day. Even their size didn't bother her. Unfortunately, she didn't find the same acceptance when she had to go back to Europe to begin her schooling. Tippy struggled to adjust to life in the city, and it's easy to see why when she went from enjoying the wilds of Africa as her playground to the confines of an apartment building. Number 8. The Cambodian Boy Who Sleeps With a Python The fact that this child's family pet eats chickens might be a bit of a giveaway, but in case not, here's another hint. This character could squeeze a man to death without breaking a sweat. A young Cambodian boy named Sambath has lived with a giant Burmese python since he was born. <laughs> Back then, the snake he called Chamran was the size of his father's thumb. Today, she measures 6 meters long and weighs 120 kilograms. But Sambath doesn't see her as a dangerous reptile, and neither do his parents. They believe she has given them good luck, looked over them, and made sure they're safe. Sambaf loves and pats and kisses her, whilst his mother sees her as a daughter. It sounds slightly insane, particularly when you think about just how lethal pythons normally are. Chamran has made the family local celebrities. They've had hundreds of visitors from other villages, all keen to catch a glimpse of the snake. Movie directors, too, have been keen to work with her, thinking she would be an asset on the big screen. But Sambath wasn't keen, and Shamran 
Sean stayed with him. When he was 11, however, the snake had gotten a little too big for her boots, and she bit her doting master on the leg. His parents decided the time had come for him to let her go, and she was moved to a zoo where she now lives with other pythons. Number 7. A Conversation with Coco she measures just 5 feet tall and weighs 300 pounds, a little heavy for a female, but she's no ordinary female. She is a gorilla named Coco. Described as having a strong sense of self, this special girl has personality in spades. She is also very intelligent. This doesn't come as any surprise, as this species has always been considered very bright, but Coco has pushed the boat out even further. She has learned American Sign Language and has an understanding of spoken English. Who is that? Think me there. Okay, that is you. Dr. Penny Patterson launched the innovative language experiment, demonstrating with the help of Coco that gorillas not only express their wants and needs, but they also exhibit creativity and complex human-like emotions. Coco demonstrates deep and sincere sadness when told that her pet kitten has died, and also when she is left alone at night. Dr. Patterson became her human teacher and playmate, and they've developed a deep and enduring friendship. But what makes this all the more special is that traditionally, this behavior has been considered uniquely human. A gorilla should not be able to do any of this. But the proof, as they say, is in the pudding. Coco is one unique gal. Number 6. Friendship with a Pelican Now, if you thought a python was an unusual choice for a pet, check out this guy. When Big Bird the Pelican was separated from his flock during a storm, the manager of a safari camp took him under his wing, so to speak. Jeffrey and Big Bird formed an unlikely friendship, with the pair often seen out fishing or kayaking. Because he lost his family, the great white pelican was at a disadvantage when it came to hunting, as they typically look for food in a flock. So Jeffrey and the staff at his camp started teaching him how to fish by himself. Initially, Jeffrey described him as optimistic, as he had no idea how to fish and just opened his mouth in the water, hoping a fish would wander in. He catches the occasional fish, but it's not quite enough to sustain him yet long term. Big Bird has become very attached to everyone, treating them like family. They have developed a bond with him too, and they hope that one day all their hard work will pay off so that he can survive in the wild. Number 5. I live with two grizzly bears. If you think your pets rule the roost, and the experts that we had involved, some said that unless you use them, try living with Jeff Watson's pals for a couple of days and you might just consider yourself lucky. He lives in Paoli, Indiana, and has been a bear handler for more than 30 years. As a bear handler, he says there is no vacation. His bears, Bob and Screech, are wild animals that can be trained but never tamed. Watson has had an interest in bears since he was a boy, but he never thought he would actually end up living with one, let alone two. He doesn't describe them as pets because he doesn't like to encourage people to keep them. Bears are not low maintenance and are, in fact, a full-time job, but it's a job he loves. When they were young, Watson says they saw him as their mother. They wouldn't leave his side and actually experienced separation anxiety. Despite being close to them, he warns people considering one as a pet that they can kill, they are territorial, and they're in charge. The bears were given to him. He has raised them and loved them and tried to give them the best life any captive bear could have. He has also made provisions for them when he dies. These bears are his family. Number 4. This woman loves tigers so much. They might have a reputation for being a fearsome jungle cat. But, we'll love you. 
but Janice Haley of Orlando, Florida reckons they're just misunderstood. She says her Bengal tigers are just as loving and playful as their tiny domesticated cousins, just a tad bigger. Haley's cuddly kittens Janda and Saber weigh in at an impressive 400 and 600 pounds respectively and are hand-fed three times a day. Saber is a white Bengal and Janda orange. They live in an enclosure in her backyard and are clearly comfortable with Haley as she is them. Over the years, she has reared quite a few different big cats and has plenty of volunteers to help care for and entertain them. The gorgeous pair love plenty of attention and sometimes Haley will even lie on the ground beside them as they fall asleep. They will also often rub her on the face and let her kiss them on the nose. Number 3. 5,000 Mile Swim to Visit Man Jin Jing, the South American Magellanic Penguin, has a sweet relationship with the man who saved his life in 2011. It's a tale of hope, courage, and endurance for a tiny penguin that was found covered in oil and close to death. Retired bricklayer and part-time fisherman Yao Pereira de Souza, who lives in an island village just outside of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, found him lying on rocks on his local beach. He cleaned the oil off his feathers, fed him a daily diet of fish, and nursed him back to health. The grateful penguin was released into the wild, but Yao has been well rewarded for his efforts. The unlikely friendship between Dean Deem and Brazilian pensioner. Every year, Jin Jing travels 5,000 miles to visit the man who saved him. And for a little penguin, that's a massive journey. He now spends eight months of every year with Yao. Where he resides for the remaining four months is a mystery, but it's assumed he's breeding off the coast of Argentina in Chile. Yao loves the little penguin like his own child, and the feeling, it would seem, is mutual. Number 2. Swimming with a Polar Bear Imagine sharing your morning dip in your swimming pool with a bear. And no, I'm not talking one of the teddy variety. This is a full-grown bear. Sounds more than a little crazy, doesn't it? Well, this is Canadian Mark Dumas's reality. Every morning, he and his pet polar bear, A.G., take a refreshing dive into the family swimming pool. Thankfully, Mark and his wife, Dawn, aren't exactly amateurs. They are animal handlers at Beyond Just Bears. They've even managed to train their 800-pound pet, and she now features in high-budget television advertisements and movies. A.G. and Mark have a close relationship, and can often be found fooling around, not unlike a man and his dog, just on a slightly larger scale and without the bar. Nicknamed Grizzly Man, Mark has forged a strong friendship with the bear, who shows him affection by giving him a hug or even a kiss. A.G., who is 23, has been with the couple her whole life, exceeding the life expectancy of a bear in the wild. They live about 15 to 20 years, whereas those in captivity can live up to 35. So there are a few good years in the old girl yet, and for that I'm sure Mark and Dawn are relieved. Number 1. Family Lives With A Bison Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam might be a catchy tune by Brewster Higley. We come back to the house and we said we got the name for But it's also the reality of Ronnie and Sharon Bridges and their pet buffalo, Wild Thing. The pair once owned a herd of 52 buffaloes. However, in 2004, Ronnie took ill and they had to be sold to pay for his medical bills. Wild Thing, who was just a three-month-old calf at the time, was the only one to make the cut. Ronnie, who calls himself the Buffalo Whisperer, says Wild Thing lives in the house. He watches action flicks on the television, gets bored with the news, and eats at the table. He might play rough outside, but inside he's apparently a real gentleman. Ronnie describes him as his best friend, but he acknowledges he's not the sort of pet that would suit everyone, which is hardly surprising, right? Ronnie spent years working on the rodeo circuit and insists 
experience with wild animals is a prerequisite for those wanting to own such an unusual family pet. There are some surprises when it comes to Wild Thing, though. He's toilet trained, and although he weighs 2,500 pounds, he's never broken a single thing in the house. That's impressive. When it comes to choosing a friend of the animal kind, most of us go with the tried and true, a cat or a dog. Others decide to widen their scope a little and think completely outside the box. But before you decide to make friends with a fully grown lion or even a bear for that matter, it might be a good idea to do your research. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.